Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Monday, May the 20th, 2019. Let's talk about Deontay Wilder's successful ninth defense of his heavyweight title. Right? It's a time where Wilder is 41 0 and 1 with 40 KOs, a historical record. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, before I go further, let me just encourage the boxing cognoscente to take a look at Noah Inoue's masterpiece fight. You had two great performances this week, and in fact three, outside of the Wilder fight. Right? I believe when you put together a list of the best in the sport pound for pound, I'm going to name a few names here. Terence Crawford, Vasyl Lomachenko, Gennady Golovkin, and Saul Alvarez. Right? That's my list. In a way, is as good, if not better, than all of them. Right? This is a future Boxing Hall of Famer. He's in his prime. I want you to look up his record. I want you to look at his number of successful title defenses. Understand this guy is two-handed. This guy is one of the hardest punchers in the sport, pound for pound. This guy has different strategies depending on the opponent. Right? Simply put, he's a master in his prime. Also, in what I consider personally, and I know this will open the door for some controversy, but what I consider the best heavyweight performance of the weekend, it's a fighter I have criticized in the past who has lifted his game, putting himself, in my opinion, in the running as a viable competitor against the boxing elite right now, the three kings of the heavyweight division, Joshua, Wilder, and Fury. And that's Joe Joyce, who threw down a masterful performance against Alexander Ustinov. Um, if you're going to be viable against Joshua, against Wilder, you can't be tethered to the pocket. Joshua's jab is too good. Wilder's power is too good. Right? You'll notice Joe Joyce is outside the pocket a lot against Ustinov. And if you're going to fight Wilder who's thin, right? Even this fight, 6'7", in the low 220s, that's relatively thin, folks, right? You need to be able to get to his body from the outside. Joe Joyce, first round, Ustinov, I want you to look at the quality of the jabs to the body Joyce is throwing. Finally, Gary Russell, right? This guy might have the fastest hands in the heavyweight excuse me, in boxing, not the heavyweight division, that's Andy Ruiz. But this guy in boxing, you'd be hard-pressed to find fi faster hands. In other words, if you think fast hands, if you think Manny Pacquiao, right, if you think Vasyl Lomachenko, you need to also think Gary Russell. And Russell came back, his annual title defense looked masterful against Kiko Martinez. What I like with Russell is it's not all about the hand speed. It's about the strategy. It's about catching the guy with uppercuts as he jumps in. Right? It's about mixing it up. I thought Russell, on the undercard of the Wilder fight, had a great weekend. Now let's talk about Wilder. Again, the numbers are historical. 41-0-1. Oh, right? Understand, this guy's streak of being unbeaten is getting into the Mayweather range, isn't it? Right? Nine title defenses. They pointed out that Mike Tyson had nine title defenses. Deontay Wilder's in that neighborhood. Right? Ali, I believe, one reign, nine title defenses. Right? We'll ignore the fact that Ali has another reign with ten title defenses. Well, let's just say Wilder's in the neighborhood of greats. Let me also say, too, I've read online here, I believe, one of the most underreported stories in professional sports is how committed 
the Bomb Squad. Wilder's fan base is to him. I made a pre-fight video where I just said, look, I believe this fight's unbettable because the holes in Wilder's game are too big. He's at risk to me. But I didn't believe Dominique Brazil was the person to exploit those risks. So my advice to gamblers was to stay on the sidelines in this fight. Now many of you did not appreciate those comments, right? It happens. But what's noteworthy to me is I can tell when a fighter has a passionate fan base. When you, the public, are prepared to go to the mat for the fighter, right? In the heavyweight division right now. I'm just here to tell you that you have three very passionate fan bases. I'm not talking about Joe Joyce's fan base. I'm talking about the Joshua fan base, which is also extremely passionate. The Tyson Fury fan base, which is interesting. They're older. Right? I believe this is a group that can sense greatness. And they're a little bit more reserved because they know their guy gave it away. He was on top of the world after beating Vladimir Klitschko and then took himself out of the running. Right? But make no mistake, the Tyson Fury fan base is there. Right? They're looking at the lay of the land. They realize their guy, in my opinion, correctly, has the highest ceiling. Right? They're waiting for him to return to who he was. He wasn't himself against Wilder and still won that fight, quite frankly. Right? Then you have the bomb squad. And they're looking around and they're saying, you've got to be kidding me. Our guy is the longest reigning heavyweight champion with a sanctioning body belt. Right? What more does our guy have to do to get recognition? Very few people in the public point out the fact that Wilder now has more than 40 wins. Right? No one in the public says, oh, gee, he's up in the Floyd Mayweather neighborhood in terms of the stretch of wins, right? Also, the thing with Wilder is even in the fights where he looks bad, the Gerald Washington fight, the Luis Ortiz fight, the Tyson Fury fight, he's either won those fights by KO or he's knocked the other guy down. Right? Let me also say this too. And I don't say this lightly. You know, I'm a guy who admires professional athletes, but there are certain professional athletes who I know are savvy, who I know are really intelligent, but who I also know I don't want to listen to give an interview because the athlete is too politically correct. Right? So I'm a Yankee fan. I love Alex Rodriguez. I can't listen to an Alex Rodriguez interview, right? If you're going to tout the corporate party line, wow, I've got other things to do. One of the best interviews in sports, certainly in boxing, is Deontay Wilder, right? Wilder gave a string of interviews before this fight where he said, look, I'm the talent. And he talked about his negotiating strategy and things like that and how he's betting on himself, right? I would encourage people to track down those interviews. I personally find Wilder to be very interesting. I think he's that rare athlete who's ahead of his crowd, right? In other words, he drops references in interviews repeatedly that the interviewer doesn't pick up on. Let me say, too, he's a guy who obviously loves boxing and who knows boxing history. So in some recent interviews, he's talked about how, look, this is not going to be a Riddick Bowe, Lennox Lewis situation, right? He's trying to assure fans that he definitely wants to fight and plans to fight Anthony Joshua, right? I'll also agree that Wilder has a little bit of a professional wrestler in him, right? He wants to shake people up. 
I believe he's just throwing out stuff to sell tickets, but I'll also agree that it's tasteless. So when he starts talking about wanting a body on his resume, right, in a sport where some greats were never the same after killing a man in the ring, right, Ezra Charles, for example, kills a man at light heavyweight, is so shaken by his punching power at light heavyweight that he decides to leave the division, right? Where does that get him? In the ring with Joe Lewis, who he beats for the heavyweight championship. Well, let me just say, I don't believe Wilder's serious about wanting a body on his resume, but I'll agree it's tasteless. But Wilder's the kind of guy who, again, I believe is always playing with interviewers. Right? Mauricio Suleiman, the people at the WBC are going to sit down and talk with Wilder. Wilder was in the ring with him after this bout, you know, basically hugging him, winking at him. I'm sure at that meeting, Wilder's going to say, okay, I went too far. Right? But understand, Wilder's one of these savvy guys who, you know, he's a thinking man. He knows who he is. Right? And he is betting on himself career-wise. Personally, I would have taken the zone's money. You want to hedge the risk somewhat, right? But if a fighter wants to bet on himself, who am I from the cheap seats here to criticize him for it? But in the ring, and here's where I know I'm going to get a lot of thumbs down, right? After some of these predictions, I give myself a thumbs down. But in the ring, Wilder's nickname should be Captain Obvious, right? He beats Dominique Brazil. Right hand again. Right, right hand again. Who saw that one coming? Folks, how many Wilder fights have we been talking about Wilder's right hand here online? Let's also call out a poor performance. Dominique Brazil. Who was he modeling himself after? Audley Harrison? I mean, you got to be kidding me. You're fighting Deontay Wilder and you don't have anything between you and his right hand? Where does the right hand hit Brazil? On the chin? How is Brazil exposed chin-wise? Two minutes into the fight. What makes it worse? is that that's the second right hand he's hit with in the round. Right? Has there been a longer two minutes and change in boxing history? He comes out, he gets hit with the right hand, he's in trouble. He's dazed and confused. He backs up to the ropes. Wilder follows him over there. No doubt Wilder's trying to end the fight. Then Brazil saves himself with his own right hands. It's courageous stuff. So you're watching it and you say to yourself, okay, looks like Brazil might survive this round. Now what's troubling is what happens next. On the pre-fight hype on Showtime here in the United States, they were talking about how Brazil wanted to get inside on Wilder. Right? Exactly what Freddie Roach wanted Tyson Fury to do. Right? But Freddie wasn't the head trainer for Tyson Fury. Right? So you knew Brazil's plan was to get inside on Deontay Wilder. So they get off the rope. Showtime after the fight shows you the overhead view. After Brazil gets off the ropes after being hit with the first right hand. Folks, there is Wilder up against the ropes. Now, I'm just telling you that a Golovkin, a Tyson, and a Rand Barkley, if you want to go way back, a Duran would have jumped on Wilder. Man's already hit you on the chin. You've already been in big trouble in the round. Here he is by the ropes. Wilder's back foot, questionable. Let's be blunt. 
Wilder's physique, very thin. Not a lot of fat on him. In the pre-fight hype, Brazil talked about how he used to be a quarterback, but then he found out that he was a better boxer, had a great right hand. That was the time to throw it. So if you want to get inside on Deontay Wilder, how is it that Wilder is there, lingering by the ropes, and you don't jump on him? So no. Brazil then goes to the middle of the ropes. Somebody explain the strategy to me here in the comment section of this video. Let me point out too that Brazil is one of the better interviews in boxing. Articulate guy. Right? Inexplicably. He goes to the middle of the ring. Now let's be clear here on why I consider Wilder with more than 40 wins. With 40 KOs to be a big betting risk. Right, folks? I'm just telling you, you're not getting value. I know there are Wilder people who bet on Wilder by KO who have extra money in the bank this morning. Right? And I know this has been a long-term thing. Right? After all, only two of the guys' fights have gone the distance. <laughs> right? Okay. Fair enough. He's a big betting risk. He comes over to Brazil, who's in the middle of the ring. Now, one of the problems, and we're talking about the elite upper echelon of the heavyweight division. One of the problems is Wilder can't lead with the right hand. He has a tell, doesn't he? Look at that last sequence again. To get his bearings, Wilder throws the left hand, doesn't he? Right? He throws the left hand. That opens the door. Brazil somehow, in fighting Wilder, is concerned with Wilder's left hand. Figure that one out. Right? So Brazil, who wants to counter Wilder, who doesn't seem able to recognize that Wilder's over there to throw a right hand, Brazil looks like he's brushing away the left, which I believe a lot of fighters, if they've studied Wilder, when Wilder throws the left, they're going to say, let me roll out of the pocket. Right? This is the tell before the right hand. He throws the left. At a minimum, a lot of fighters would put a hand up. Dominique Brazil instead tries to counter Wilder. Talk about a bad decision. Where's he hit with the right hand? On the chin. Where's his defense? Non-existent at that moment. In other words, after getting hit with the right hand earlier in the round, he's open for another right hand. Folks, that's the end of the fight. So let me just say, I know I'm going to hear from the bomb squad, go ahead and bring it. I know there are many of you who say, look, if it's working, if he's knocking guys out in fight after fight with a right hand, why change anything? Right? To paraphrase the great football coach Jimmy Johnson. Right? It's not Wilder's job to stop his successful right hand, which is knocking out opponents. It's the opponent's job to find a way not to get knocked out. Right? If it works, you keep doing it. Okay, fine. But here's what I want people to consider. Right? This is something I think the Tyson Fury crowd, which seems to go back to the 90s and 80s and 70s and 60s in boxing. As I said, the Tyson Fury crowd is a little bit older. 
then the bomb squad, then the AJ crowd. Right? Understand there's a recent fight. And again, it's the upper echelon of the heavyweight division. We're a fighter with a great straight right hand. In fact, he wins the heavyweight title on two straight right hands. Has that gun taken right out of the holster? Can't throw it for 12 rounds. And that's Anthony, Johns, uh, Anthony Joshua, whose right hand is neutralized the entire fight by Joseph Parker. Right? Understand, this is the same right hand that drops Charles Martin twice. Right? Joshua has an excellent straight right hand. You hardly see it against Joseph Parker because an opponent at this level who knows that's a weapon in your arsenal can have a hand up, can roll away from it, can use movement. If he sees you getting in position to throw that right hand, he's going to get himself out of that line of attack. Let's talk about another fight. Guy with a great right hand, David Hay, challenged Vladimir Klitschko for the heavyweight title. You don't see Hay land meaningful right hands in that fight. Because Klitschko at times has a hand up. This is Klitschko with a chin that some people consider dodgy. Let's remember, Klitschko's on the canvas twice against Sam Peter. He's on the canvas against Lehman Brewster. <clears throat> right? He's stopped by Corey Sanders. He's stopped by Ross Purity. But you're going to notice there are times in that fight where Klitschko just has a hand up on his chin. Right? Klitschko figured out that you don't even have to track the punch to protect yourself. You can just have a hand up around your chin at times to take away the threat of a guy throwing a right hand on your chin. What I want to do too is turn the clock back even further. Let's talk about an old timer who's still around. Who the boxing press can just go up to and talk. He's one of the friendliest people in the sport of boxing. He's been a spectacular ambassador for the sport of boxing. He's a former heavyweight champion. One of the hardest punchers, in my opinion, in history. George Foreman. Now, Foreman, in addition to learning how to jab from heavyweight champion Sonny Liston, Believe it or not, Foreman in his corner also had boxing legend, one of the best light heavyweights in history, Archie Moore, the old mongoose. Now, Archie had a defense, right? You know how guys today have their hands like this, right? Archie Moore would have his defense like this. Now keep in mind, Archie Moore, murderous puncher. Look at the number of KOs. But the point is, Archie Moore, who once knocked down Rocky Marciano, and Moore was coming up from light heavyweight. Archie Moore's defense allows you to have a glove up here. Notice how it covers your chin. This is Foreman's defense, by the way. Notice how it covers your chin. Notice how it frees this hand to hit an opponent in the body. Let me also say, too, I got in trouble once here online years ago when I talked about how Vladimir Klitschko doesn't really lean on opponents, use his body like George Foreman does. 
and I got taken to the woodshed by fans who said, Oh, Klitschko leans on people all the time. He leans on the back of their necks. Right? People said, Hey, look at the Klitschko-Alexander Povetkin fight. Okay, okay. Understand, Foreman, different type of leaning. Foreman, big man, like Brazil. Right? Tall, big. Not even as tall as Brazil. Right? The heavyweights now are supersized. Well, understand, Foreman... With this guard, with height, especially during his comeback, would just run into small opponents. How do you get inside? Foreman, during his comeback, didn't have fast foot speed. But with this defensive construct, and keep in mind, Foreman had a great jab. With this defensive construct, Foreman would just run inside on guys. They would throw punches. Foreman would catch the shots. Then when Foreman got close to you, knowing he weighed a lot, knowing that in boxing you can inflict pain, punishment, tire out an opponent without throwing punches, Foreman would just lean on guys up on the ropes. Have them feel his weight. Have them have to support his weight. Early in fights. Right? Well, let me just say, Somebody's going to have to explain to me why Deontay Wilder's straight right hand can't be stopped in a sport where other guys have had spectacular straight right hands. And they've been stopped. Sometimes the fighter can't even throw the punch. Anthony Joshua. Right? Look at the CompuBox numbers. Other times, the guy can throw the punch, but either an opponent has his head tucked behind his shoulder in some Philly shell construct, think Floyd Mayweather, or the guy has a hand up, Vladimir Klitschko, George Foreman. Let me also point this out too. I want people to go back to the rematch of George Groves against Carl Frotch. That's an interesting rematch. You'll notice the sequence that leads to the knockout is chess. You'll notice Groves has a hand up. So what Carl Frotch, who is two-handed, does is he throws a jab to the hand that Groves has up. All of these videos are on YouTube. He throws a, a jab to the hand that Groves has up. This is boxing chess. So the punch, Groves catches it. The problem is Frotch is two-handed. So Frotch, knowing that <laughs> Groves' defense is occupied with the jab he's deliberately thrown to Groves' catcher hand, then comes over with the right hand. That's what knocks George Groves out. Well, all I'm saying is here with Wilder, we don't even get to that level of chess, folks. Because Dominique Brazil doesn't have a hand up. He doesn't, in the very first round, have any clues, any ideas on how to protect himself defensively. So he's in against a straight right hand artist with no defensive construct. Let me say this too to the bomb squad. The problem Wilder folks are gonna have with longtime boxing hardcore people is to convince them despite this record nine consecutive successful defenses, right? Nine successful defenses, right? Let's remember in boxing, it's a successful defense if the fight's a draw and I enter the ring with the title, right? More than 40 wins, 40 KOs, has never lost a fight. People are going to say, yes, but was his game diversified enough where we can say he belongs with the all-time greats. 
right? You, you're in a division now where you have guys with a multiplicity of skills, right? As good a puncher as George Foreman was, he had one of boxing's best jabs. Sonny Liston, one of boxing's best jabs. Right? You have guys in the sport. Mike Tyson, two-handed fighter. Right? Tyson knocked out many men with his left hand. Right? With Deontay Wilder, at a time when it's a golden era for heavyweights. Understand, I'm serious when I say the water is deep at heavyweight right now. Right? I'm expecting Andy Ruiz to show some skills against Anthony Joshua. I'll say this. The cruisers who are entering the heavyweight division. Right? Usyk, who I should have named on my pound for pound list, has a multiplicity of skills. Right? I didn't name him because he's a heavyweight now, and heavyweights typically aren't on the pound-for-pound pound list. But understand, you can't look at great fighters like Usyk and say, wow, he's a great straight right hand. Right? And ignore everything else he does. You can with Deontay Wilder. Right? Murat Gassiev. As I sit here today, I don't know what would prevent him from getting inside on Deontay Wilder. Now, I'll agree. Wilder's very skilled at what he does. The best view, if you saw the Showtime episode, right? The whole, the whole presentation. In the post-fight, they show you the overhead view. And you notice that when you look at it from above, Wilder's much farther away from Brazil than you think. You'll also notice that Wilder's feet are very fast. So when Brazil comes forward, Wilder moves backwards with him. Right? Wilder is an athlete. Right? Wilder also is setting things up. Right? He throws that left hand knowing that his real game is to throw that right hand on the chin. And Wilder is a quick starter. Just look at this Brazil fight. Look at the Bermain Stavern fight. Right? Wilder is a quick starter when he knows he has a slow footed, slow starter in front of him. But. Knockouts cause amnesia. Let's remember that Wilder was just in a fight where he needed to knock the opponent down in the 12th round to get a draw. Let's remember before that, Wilder was in a fight where the doctor at the beginning of a round, and I don't know why there isn't more outrage at this, at the beginning of a round, examines Wilder, gives him several more seconds to recover. Had Wilder's eye showed a concussion without throwing another punch, Wilder would have lost his heavyweight title. In other words, he was rung up by Luis Ortiz. We're not that far removed from Eric Molina badly hurting Deontay Wilder. Folks, he's badly hurt in that fight. Right? We're not far removed from Gerald Washington dampening Wilder's punch output. Understand, Washington in that fight bends at the waist, is throwing jabs to Wilder's body. It throws Wilder off to the point where just revisit the early rounds of that fight. The fight only goes four rounds. It throws Wilder off to the point where Wilder can't even throw punches. 
So I'm just telling you, when a guy is priced in the betting market as if he's Lennox Lewis, as if he's Mike Tyson, and you can take away the guy's offense, right? When, when a guy has a tell, in other words, it's not, I see an opening, drop the right hand hammer. No, he has to touch you with the left before he drops the right hand. Right? I'm just telling you, you know that the guy is overvalued in the betting market. Let me close by saying this. Vladimir Klitschko had a great straight right hand. Right again, we're talking about the upper echelon of a heavyweight division. If you're going to talk about all-time great champions and stuff like that, let's compare him to other champions. Vladimir Klitschko had a great straight right hand. Great straight right hand. I want folks here online to look at his fight against Ray Austin in its entirety. Right? I'm just telling you that Vladimir Klitschko hardly ever throws that right hand against Ray Austin. He takes Ray Austin out with left hooks. Right now I know some people feel that I'm being too hard on Deontay Wilder. They're saying, okay, so his game is not diversified. Does it have to be? In my opinion, it does. If these other heavyweights are worth their salt, a guy cannot have one big tool in his toolkit and then rule the roost in the heavyweight division. Right? You have two other unbeaten champs. You have hungry guys who have had a taste of a heavyweight title fight. Not just Dylan White, but the guy he beat, Joseph Parker. You have other guys who have always been the king of their castle, right? Usyk, Olympic gold medalist, undisputed cruiserweight champion. Now he's in the heavyweight division. Who has he been submissive to, right? These are guys, well, Maris Bredis, KO'd Manuel Char. Right? Elusive. Hard to find in the ring. Multiplicity of skills. Right? We've been in a tall man, 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, and taller. Isn't Tyson Fury taller than that? Flat-footed era here. Right? Fury's back. Fury's up on the balls of his feet, but he's just getting back to who he was, shaking off years, literally, of ring rust. Right, so in this flat-footed era, we've grown accustomed to guys winning fights with big right hands. Right, how was Charles Martin, granted he's a southpaw, but how was Charles Martin ever heavyweight champion? All I'm saying is, boxing has errors. I believe we're getting back to an era of more fluidity. Guys on the balls of their feet. Guys who don't allow you to touch them with the left hand and then hit you with their Sunday punch as you stand there in the middle of the ring defenseless like Dominique Brazil was. So I applaud Wilder on his success. Right? Every Wilder fight at the high level. He's going to be a betting risk right now if he's priced like he was priced for this Dominique Brazil fight. I know it worked out here. I know it worked out here. I'm guessing if he fights another Dominique Brazil, the odds are going to be even bigger. Right? Fighters like Mike Tyson deserve the big odds. Because you understood with Tyson. Right hand, left hand up top, down low, body shots, hand speed, 
you understood with Tyson there was nowhere to run. Right? Contrast that with Deontay Wilder in the first four rounds of his fight against Luis Ortiz. The first three rounds of his fight against Gerald Washington. The first eight rounds of his fight against Tyson Fury. Where Fury isn't cut, isn't hurt, isn't even hit with anything meaningful. Right? At the upper echelon of the sport. When we get in a title unification. When we get in an unbeaten champions fighting each other. When we're at the part of the sport where Joseph Parker in an underrated performance could take away Anthony Joshua's right hand. When we get to that part of the sport, I'm just telling you. And <laughs> I know it's going to cost me in the ratings, fair enough. But I'm just telling you. Even fighters with great records like Wilder has right now, very high knockout percentages, they're at risk. That's how I see it. I didn't bet on the Fury uh, Brazil fight. I didn't recommend a bet on that Fury Brazil fight. Um, it worked out for the, excuse me, the Wilder Brazil fight. It worked out for Wilder. I congratulate him on that. The fact that it was yet another right hand up top against an opponent who is practicing an Audley Harrison defense, if you recall the Wilder Audley Harrison fight doesn't lead me to believe that Wilder has added other tools to his toolkit. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you if you feel I've misrepresented Wilder or any of the fighters here. Foreman, uh, Liston, Archie Moore. Tell us about it in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.